Hello there, we are going to talk about linearity and the calculation of the antiderivative of polynomials. Our main objectives for today's lesson are learning about the linearity of the integral, understanding how to use this linearity to calculate more complex integrals, and as a direct application, learning how to calculate the primitive or the integral of a general polynomial, in fact any polynomial. The requirements that we need to know are knowing how to derive, understanding the concept of antiderivative, and the power of an antiderivative, which is the essential immediate antiderivative. Well, let's take a quick look again at the concept of antiderivatives. We define the antiderivative of a function of small f as a function of uppercase f if and only if. When we differentiate uppercase f, we obtain small f. Put in a different way, we go backward. If we take the uppercase f and we derive it, it must result in the small f. That is exactly the idea of an antiderivative. The set of all the primitives gives us the integral. Well, the concept of linearity is tied to linear operations, which are addition and scalar multiplication by numbers. In this case, we consider what happens with the integral of the sum. The integral of the sum would be very interesting if it happened to be the sum of the integrals. In that case, it would be very easy, or at least easier to calculate. Let's question and check if that is actually the case. In order to check if that is indeed the case, we are going to use the definition we have seen above. The integral of f dx would be a certain uppercase f, and the g dx would be a certain uppercase g of x. Is it true that uppercase f plus uppercase g is the antiderivative of f small plus g small? Well, let's check it. The derivative of the uppercase f would be the lowercase f, and the derivative of the uppercase g would be the lowercase g. This happens simply because f is an antiderivative of f, and g is an antiderivative of g. Well, if now we take uppercase f and uppercase g together and derive that sum, it turns out that its derivative is the sum of the derivatives, and therefore it is indeed f small plus g small. Therefore, this relationship between derivatives holds. It is important to be clear on the following. What happens here with addition does not happen with multiplications. The integral of the product is not the product of the integrals, which is a fairly common mistake. It cannot be done. There are some very specific cases, however, of multiplications that are easy to do. This is the second part of the linearity, which we are about to take a look at now. In this case, we multiply by a number, when we multiply in this case here by lambda. We ask ourselves what the integral of lambda times a function would be. Well, the interesting thing would be that this was the number multiplied by the integral, and indeed, it is going to be that way. Let's check it. We take a primitive of f small, denoted as uppercase f. Then we would have that the integral is lambda times uppercase f, and we will verify that the formula is indeed correct we would take lambda f dx, differentiate it, and the derivative of lambda f is lambda times f. Therefore, we would obtain the required expression. Well, these two properties, both the addition and multiplication, are what is usually called the linearity of the integral. And that integral, that linearity, allows us to calculate the antiderivative of the polynomials. How do we calculate the primitive of a polynomial like the one here? 3x squared minus 4x plus 2. Well, as we see, this is a combination of three addends. The first thing we can do by applying the linearity is to separate the three different numbers. The first integral, the second integral, and the third one. And now, on each one of those integrals, the numbers can come out. In the first one, the 3 comes out. In the next one, the 4 comes out. And in the last one, the 2 is the one that comes out, leaving respectively only powers x squared, x, and 1, which is a power of 0. And now we have the antiderivatives. The antiderivative of x squared is x cubed divided by 3. The antiderivative of x is x squared divided by 2. And finally, the antiderivative of 1 is x, at least one of them. Therefore, the result we obtain is this one that we see on screen right now, which now we can proceed to simplify a little bit. Both 3's would disappear, the 4 minus 2 would become 2, and we would end up obtaining this final expression. It is important to note that it is always necessary to add the constant of integration c since the first three addends would give us an antiderivative of the function. But the integral is, in reality, the set of all the primitives. And as we already know, that is always an antiderivative plus an arbitrary constant. Well, what are we able to do after today's lesson? So far we know the concept of linearity of the integral. We also know how to use that same concept of linearity to calculate more difficult integrals. And in particular, we have learned to calculate the antiderivative or the integral of any polynomial. See you in the next video. Thank you.